Today we're taking a look at Emacs's open IPC system. Open, open what? Now, if you're unfamiliar with the open IPC system, it's pretty much an open source digital FPV system. And that's a huge deal. And why is that? Because currently in the market, we have digital FPV systems by like DJI, Walksnail, and even HD0. But some aspect of those systems are either proprietary or made in house. These companies have some kind of creative control of their product, whether it be the hardware, the software, or even the pricing guys. Now the difference is, is that the open IPC is fully open source, meaning anyone can contribute and make it for yourself. Even you can do it for yourself as well. Now this is exciting because this kind of reminds me of the early days of the Express LRS system. Now prior to Express LRS, we had systems like FR Sky or even TBS Crossfire. And these things worked pretty well, but we had no say in the software, how this thing worked. They would change the software on these FR Sky, making it incompatible with newer system, or you have Crossfire here that was a little bit too expensive for the average DIY person. And you also had to wait for software updates on these things. And the Express LRS came around where you had to buy the parts yourself, do some soldering, maybe print a 3D case, and also do some configuration and software in your computer. It was just a little bit too much for the average FPV pilot. But manufacturers jumped on and kind of developed this system because it was open source. Furthermore, you had pilots and developers contributing to the system for free, guys, just because they want to see the system advance. Now, this all makes the system better, and today we have pretty much a complete product that's pretty much on par with the original TBS Crossfire. So now we have systems this small doing more than one watt, two watts. It has Gemini, Mavlink. It's pretty impressive just in the span of a year and a half to two years. Now this is the greatest benefit of any open source project and Emacs seems to be starting the trend in this open IPC system. Now before I show you these components here, I do have to say that these are first generation products and Emacs kind of categorized this as an alpha product, meaning that these things are physically made but they're just here to show what this open IPC can do and get the feedback from the community. So if you have any kind of suggestions or comments about this whole system, leave them in the comment section down below. Maybe I can answer it, but most likely Emacs will see it as well and integrate those suggestions in their future products. Heck, they might even answer your questions. So leave those questions down below because this is an alpha product. In fact, they've made only less than 100 of these to go out to test and develop right now. Okay, so here are some of the components here for the open IPC system made by Emacs. We're gonna start off with the TX side of things and work our way to the RX side since the TX is a little bit more complicated and more in depth than the RX side right here. All right, let's start off with the VTX in camera here. Now, the first thing I have to mention is that Emacs does make two versions of this whole system here. They have a larger system and I have the smaller whoop style or tiny whoop style series here, which is more compact, can fit in smaller whoops. And I'm pretty happy to have the smaller one because I have a lot of smaller drones that this would be perfect for. First thing here is this camera here. You have a nano size camera, so 14 millimeters. And they say you can get around 1080p, around 90 frames per second. So that's pretty impressive for a small camera right off the bat, no 720p. Um, straight to 1080, so that's really awesome. Behind here, you have a MIPI style cable, almost like uh, HD0 on here, very, very small. And that goes to your camera board right here. This controls the board, processes the information from the camera. And as you can see, it also has a MIPI cable on here. You have a large style ARM or ARM processor in here. And I'm sure all the other manufacturers will be using the same processor as well. On the back here, you have the VTX. And as you can see, it has two UFL antennas on here. So pretty straightforward. Um, it's really nice and integrated. Although this is an alpha product, it looks like this would fit into any kind of whoop as of now. Though this has a 25 by 25 mount on the solution on here. So you can mount this to your whoops if you want to. I'll be mounting this to probably a three and a half inch freestyle drone and uh, we'll find ways to install that. But this looks pretty straightforward. Now you'll notice on the side here you have a plug on here and that goes to this right here. And this is your ethernet or ethernet control board. And this allows you to change the parameters on this board altogether. Now this is still, as I said, an alpha product, 
but you don't need this connected to the VTX or the board here to make this whole thing here work. If you want to change the parameters or settings on here, you can control it either with the Ethernet port or this USB-C cable on here. So pretty nice overall. Uh, we'll get into this a little bit later once they develop more software on this board. Now I have to say that the VTX on here, it is limited to a hundred milliwatts. I don't know how much range you're going to get with that. Now that's a little bit lower than some of the competitors like the Walksnail 1S VTX or maybe the Whooplite VTX by HD0. But we don't know how this is gonna deal with with interference and how this thing here works. So it's not accurate to say that, oh, it's 100 milliwatts, it's not gonna perform well. But uh, we'll see how this thing here performs and see if it does a really good job. This thing is not too bad, very impressive. In fact, I want to weigh this right now and see how much it weighs. And this is with the camera, the MIPI cable, and the antennas. The only thing we don't have right here is just the wires that go from the flight controller to the board, but this should be fairly light. And it's showing around 13 grams. So that's pretty light. I forgot how much the 1S Walksnail VTX weighs, but this is not bad at all. Very, very light. All right, so let's talk about the differences of the larger system. Now, instead of having the smaller camera, you have a larger style camera, a 90 millimeter camera. It's a micro camera with the same resolution and frame rate on here. Same kind of MIPI cable, but it also goes to a camera control board just like this, but it's separate and independent from the actual transmission system on here. So in this case, you will have two separate boards opposed to this one board on here. Now that's crucial difference because that larger system has a higher output. This one here is limited to 100 milliwatts, but the larger system is limited to 800 milliwatts. So a lot more power, and that's probably why they have a separate board for it. In the end, it does still have two UFL connectors and two antennas as well. It also has the same uh, control Ethernet and USB-C control board to configure this board if you want to. So this is very similar between the two. Let's move on to the RX side of things. And you can see where this is gonna develop into the future. This is just a first generation product. And the first thing that stands out is just the casing on here. This looks like a 3D printed case on here. It's not the cleanest, but this just gets the job done, isolates the electronics in here. It looks pretty good, but you get the gist of it. Now this here is the receiver. Now there's two versions of this. I do have the smaller version. This one here is 100 milliwatts. And the larger version has a two watt receiver. The difference being just how much information it can process and therefore it consumes more power. But besides that, it's kind of interesting. You have two antennas on here as well. So diversity, I'm guessing. And this one here came with a kind of omnidirectional antenna as well as a kind of like a directional patch style antenna. And you can also tell this is also 3D printed. It does have Emacs on here, but it looks, it looks okay official. So there really isn't any goggles for this system right now. And that's probably gonna be the next stage of this whole system here. Um, and as you can see, I guess, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, the limiting factor is gonna be the processing power of these goggles. Now on the side here, you have a XT30 connection to actually power this thing up as well as a USB-C connector as well. You can use either one to power up this device. And on the other side, you also have a USB-C uh, plug as well. And this will be the output going to your device, your mobile device. And we'll talk about that here very, very shortly. Looks like we have an LED light in the center. And that's about it, it's the 3D printed case. I can see some electronics on the back here, some wires. I can't tell if this one has a fan. I don't think it, it'll have a fan, but I don't know. We'll see when we power it up if there's a fan in here. Besides that, these are, let's see here, is it RPSMA? They are SMA connectors, so that's pretty cool. But overall, not much you can tell from it. You can tell it's a kind of a first gen product. It's kind of, it's, it's really nice, it's not bad, but you can tell that the actual production version would be a little bit more uh, nicer, maybe injected molded plastic, maybe different colors. This is just a rough first draft of this system. Now we said that we also have a USB-C cable, actually USB-A to USB-C. We'll take a look at it right here. As you can see, pretty standard USB 3 cable here. And as I said, USB A to USB C. And then they also included a OTG cable or adapter on here. And that's gonna be connected to your phone. So it's as simple as plugging this end here to the single port. And then you plug this other end into your mobile device. I think for right now, it only supports Android, no iOS. So sorry about that. 
And for best performance, guys, you will want to have a modern device, something with a quick and fast processor. In fact, when Emacs contacted me, the first question they asked was, what kind of mobile device do you have? How recent or how new is your phone? Now, they're saying this system here, during their test, you can get latencies as low as 14 milliseconds, which is pretty decent, really good actually. But that's all gonna vary depending on the processor in your mobile device. Now, fortunately for me, I have a relatively new phone, 2024, it's like a Galaxy S24 Ultra, so it has the latest Snapdragon processor in here. So this shouldn't be a problem, and hopefully this thing here will give me optimum performance. So you just take your OTG cable, plug it into your phone, and then fire up the app, and then you will get a signal to your phone. So that's pretty much it. This thing here will communicate with this system here. This is all I said, open source, so you can build this for yourself if you want to. But I'm really excited to get this thing here tested and installed into a drone, guys. Now that leads us into the next question. What drone am I gonna put this in? And I have a few options here. Now, initially I wanted to put this into one of my free drones that I have available here. Now I have one here. This is the x 35 by Beta FPV. It's a really cool drone. This used to have a DJI, well, Cadix Vista in here. So digital system and it has everything ready to go. It's actually ready for that camera. There's space in here and it's actually a top mount. So this was made to install a VTX on the top. So this is a really good candidate. This came to my mind. I don't know, we'll see if I'm gonna use that. But then my first choice, my preferred choice would be to use the Grinder Reno. This was a recent build. It has a wide deck on here. It's really powerful. It has a modern flight control, so really good for interacting with this open IPC. The only problem is that this thing has a squished deck. There's not much space in here to install a VTX, and that is my biggest concern. So, I don't know. I also had a nano camera on here as well, so it does facilitate that. Um, this currently has the HD0 Whoop Light VTX, so this is a very light sub-250 drone. And this would be the perfect candidate for it, actually. Very seamless process, but I don't know. This might be on the table as well. And then last but not least, I have one that I might actually go with, and that's the Baby Hawk 2. Now this is the analog version, so this would be a good way to convert an analog drone to a digital drone. The best thing about this is wider. It has an all-in-one flight controller on board, so it's very, very thin. There's a lot of space in here, and I can just take this out. This is the analog VTX and convert this to digital. Plus, it's an Emacs drone, so Emacs product and an Emacs drone probably makes the most sense. This is probably what I'm leaning to, and um, yeah, I might do that, but I'm gonna be doing it in the next couple of days. So, what do you think? Which one should I choose? The Emacs Baby Hawk 2, the x 35 or maybe the Grinderino? Um, but they're all good candidates for this open IPC. Anyways, guys, this is just a first look at the system. Next video, I'll be installing this into the drone, showing you how to do that, and then we'll go for a test flight. So if you have any questions or anything you see that kind of sticks out to you that might be a suggestion for Emacs, or actually any manufacturer, because this is open IPC, any manufacturer could actually make this or remake this and make some improvements on this entire system. Leave them in the comment section down below so that uh, maybe I can answer it or maybe Emacs can uh, answer your questions or concerns. So let me know what you think about the open IPC project. Is this thing here interest you? I'm really excited about this for numerous reasons, just because how Express LRS blew up. It's one thing when a manufacturer has their engineers and a budget or resources to make a project, but when it's open source where anyone can tr contribute to it, it just makes it so much more exciting. You don't know what's gonna happen. Things move really, really fast. And I guarantee you, the information here that I'm providing to you is probably gonna change in the next month or two only because these things change so quickly when it's open source. I remember making the same video for Express LRS and it was almost obsolete in like two weeks when a new firmware came out. So, um, but yeah, let me know what you think about this. I am also excited to see the price point on these uh, items. For right now, Emacs doesn't have a concrete price, but they're estimating this whole system here to be around $90, including this little receiver as well. So camera, the extra control board, the VTX, and the receiver for 90 bucks, which is, a crazy deal only because some other VTX, just the VTX, not the camera, costs over a hundred bucks. So 
that's the power of open source as well. So if we can probably make this whole system here better, we'll probably be better off in the long run, guys. So let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.